That's not until later next season! Yes, yeah, yes, thank you. We're not going there, though. Shut up, Waka. Anyway, welcome everyone to Let's Play Okami HD, episode 34. Let's not listen to Waka right now, we got a lot of other things we gotta do before we can even think about tackling the north. So we got five things I wanna do today. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to go visit that dojo over on Ryoshima Coast. The idea is... Just make our way over here to the uh, Mermaid Spring. Hello, merchant guy. Now we'll just make our way in. We head to, uh... Yeah, just... There, there it is. Ryoshima Coast! There's a dojo right there. We'll just go ahead and make our way over. Several moves that I want to purchase over there today, just because, well, now we have the chance. Seeing as how we're not going to be, uh... Next season, we're not going to be down here a whole lot. I figure we might as well get what we need to get done, done right now. It's a very important move we need to learn for later anyway. So we'll go ahead and talk to him real quick. We're going to learn the Golden Fury. That's the big one right here. And we just go. In we go. Very, very easy to use. Just press circle. And you will drop a demon fang automatically. Or they will drop a demon fang automatically when you pick up. <clears throat> so yeah, all you do is you just walk up to an enemy. You gotta get kinda close because the range is kind of short. The idea is you just face him, press circle, and that happens. Whenever an enemy gets hit by that, they drop a demon bag. Guaranteed every time. Only one thing. If you want to get a lot of demon fangs, it's a good it's a good place to just, you know, go around those demon scrolls that hang around in the overfield and just kind of grind them up and piss on every enemy you see. There's a better way to grind for those that we'll be doing later today in this episode. There's a few other moves I want to get to while we're here. We'll go ahead and get uh, the rosary technique. This increases the rate of rosaries. The rate of attack of rosaries. He'll talk to you about him. He'll give you the tips.
You just, uh, this is just a increased rosary combo. When you have a rosary equipped, you can do a six hit combo. Also very useful for what we're going to be doing later ahead. Eh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just that kind of guy who's one and done, so I'm out of here. Ah, can't dash though. Let's see if there's anything else we can learn. We need to learn all of these at some point, so... Let's just get the important ones out of the way right now. Let's see, four wins. Spear Armageddon. Yeah, that's that's a good one too. That'll increase our rosary power even further. This is pretty much just eight attacks. An eight hit combo. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, shit! How? So just smash square until whatever's in front. What the fuck? Just smash square until whatever's in front of you is dead. Really? Me to go one at a time, huh? Let's see. Whatever. I just can't mash square all the time. I gotta actually do the combo, even though in practicality, I'm just gonna be mashing square until what's ever in front of me dies. Yeah, never lose director self improvement. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, that's all the time I want to spend in the dojo right now. I think we got everything we need. We learned how to piss, we learned how to flail beads at people. Looking good, I'd say. So we'll just make our way back over here. And it is turned daylight. Perfect timing. And there's a guy over here that I kind of want to talk to. Should be running the coastline. There he is. Hayate is the messenger of Ryushima Coast. His brother is Ida from Shinshu Field. He boasts great speed, as his name translates to strong enemy. Yeah, what a race. So all of a sudden you're in a race with this guy, Hayate. Well, the idea with this, with the, the idea with him is that you just gotta keep up with him, but don't go directly behind him because he's throwing burrs that will immediately slow your velocity. If he gets too far ahead, he disappears, but you have to go find him and talk to him again in order to start the race again. What you do is just run, get close to him, just kind of play around with your running, I guess. The idea is you have to tackle him, you have to headbutt him, and that's kind of difficult to do. Especially later on. That's a lot of praise. Alright, after that, we'll just go ahead and uh, make it night. And that exclamation mark means that Hayate is ready to race again. Well, he's not really faster. Uh, he's really just throws more burrs. So you really gotta be accurate when you hit him. It's good to zoom the camera out so you can see what's in front of you and you have a better view of what's around you. Can line up your shot a little better. Shit.
Don't try and dash to gain speed, because that, that won't really help you out. Sometimes it helps to, uh, sort of nab him on that curve there. And, uh, oh, shit. You can also cut corners, too, to catch up with him. So you can cheat with burrs, I can cheat with cutting corners. It's only fair, right? Ah! Oh, that, that's why I was going to hit a burr. I don't think there's any real time limit, it's just a matter of fact of, uh... I don't know, I guess beating him. Well, not really beating him. Hit him without losing him. Like that. So much praise. We can make we can turn to daylight again. And now he's ready for round three. This third raises the hardest because he drops burrs like crazy. But again, if you run alongside him and not directly behind him, he should be okay. But it makes timing that that tackle ever so much more dangerous. I don't even have to let it pass me so that way he can uh, I can actually hit him. Ah, fuck. Well, that's what that happens when that happens. Luckily, you can just talk to him again and he'll just immediately start the race again. A little tricky, but it's just a matter of fact of achieving that perfect tackle at the right time. It's all about timing. That's right... No! Fuck! Oh, that was close, though. Okay, I feel full sprint. I can catch up with him. I can just hit him from back here! Ah, shit! Go, Hammy, go! Don't lose that cheating bastard! You lost that cheating bastard! Take three! What else I like is that it doesn't cost anything to race him. You just get up and do it. Dig as many times as you need. This last one's all that I need! Ah. I'm gonna tackle you into the, into the fucking dirt, you bastard. Like that. Yeah! It's good to get him on those curves. He's really open. Jeez! Uh, no. Yes. What's he give you? Well, did all that running for Stray Bead 45. Lovely. Well, that was the second thing on our list. And now, before we go to the third thing, let's talk to the merchant.
Haven't you heard, dude? I saved the world. Everything's all good now. Well, at least over in this leg of the country. Let's sell our few treasures that we have, because, well, why the hell not? And, uh, let's see if we can buy anything. I think we're okay on food so far. Yep. Uh, we'll get some Infinity Stones. Very crucial you get these. Uh, some Vengeance Slips. E uh, a couple of Exorcism Slips. Well, actually, uh, some large Exorcism Slips. That's gonna really come in handy. Um, a couple of Steel Fist Sakes. Good to stock up on those. Steel Souls, if you want. And, uh, Holy Bones. Definitely get a lot of those, too. Get mediums and larges especially. Smalls you could probably go without, but... Alright, yeah, I think that's all we need from this guy. So leaves us with a lot of money left over. Especially after we bought all those moves, too. Now we gotta head back to the Mermaid Spring. Jump on in again. I mean, get in the Whirlpool. This time we're going to Shinshu Field. But everything is not as it appears. The gigantic thunderstorm is raging through the area. Right there. That's where we need to be to continue on with our quest. But we're not going over there! One guy in particular I need to talk to. One guy that we uh, talked to before, like a while ago. But now we can actually talk to him. We actually have things to say to him. This is Hayate's brother. And now we're going to race him now. He's a little bit more complicated because he doesn't run around a set path every single time. He's easy enough usually because his, this first race he doesn't drop any birds at all so you can just run up right behind him. You know, just, just run to that and there you go. That was just the beginner's track to get you warmed up for these kinds of races. So we'll go ahead and make it night again. At least I think it was daytime when we started. Yeah, okay. Then we'll go with round two. A while ago, dude. Again, when he says faster, what he really means is, I drop burrs now. So now I cheat like my brother. You guys are really, really shitty racers. It also helps to have the demon bell equipped, so that way those demon scrolls don't interfere with your race. Because they will interfere with your race and you will lose. But if you have the demon bell, they won't bother you, so you just have to not run into them. Also, uh, the reason why I'm doing this all in a row is because when you end the race, you stop right at the spawn point. So you can just go to the next day, and then he'll be right there in front of you every time. So race three! That's what we need, the gimmick gear. I decided to save this guy uh, after Hayate because I think he's a little bit tougher, especially with this race. But the thing is, I've been cutting him off here at the bridge every single time, so maybe now we'll get to see him in action. Ordinarily, he'd go down that right path, but now he's deviating. He's going this way. Ooh, dare 
See, look at this. This is a constant stream of burrs. These guys are cheaters. This ain't Mario Kart, man. Oh, come on, damn it, pig. You got my way. Nah, I'm gonna lose him. Maybe not. Where is this guy going? This guy's never heard of a path. Ah, shit. What the? Boy. Speed it up, speed it up. Uh, shit! Oh, come on! I'll chase you down for as long as I need to, buddy. Shit! Ah! No! Damn you, wait! Ah! It's always a third race that gives me problems. Well, while we're here, is might as well grab this clover. Because now we have Digging Champ, we can actually get it. For a nice, cool 20 frames. If you run along this way, kind of up this slope and over this bridge, you're bound to find him. So you can immediately race again. Tail behind his legs? Fuck you! Who drops the burrs between his legs? All right, I got you this time. Here we go. Aha! So it's always best to get him out of the gate. There we get the gimmick gear. Hooray. There's one more race later on in the game, but uh, the thing about that is that you get to race up against Sonic. Well, not really, but you do get a trophy for uh, beating both of the both Ida and Hayate. Now we're gonna head back to the Mermaid Spring. Got a couple more things that we need to do. We're gonna head back to Taka Pass, actually. There's one more thing that we forgot to get. Just because, well, we never really got the chance to go back here before now. And now we do, and so we will. Let's see, get my bearings, okay. Just run past these banners here. And just head straight from there. We'll pass the path from the Cutter's house, I think that's what that is. Nope, that's Sasa Sanctuary. My bad. Right here is the place we need to be. Did I leave that tree unbloomed? I must bloom every tree. Oh, there's two of them! Not too far away? No, of course not. Okay, now, back to the matter at hand. This dig spot. Hop on down in here. We're at a mysterious spring again. So we got trees to bloom. Look at this. Look at all of these monkeys. All of these god dang cute ass monkeys just jumping around. They're hungry. They want food. Let's give these guys some food. Give us some meat. Yeah. All those monkeys? 48 praise. That is ridiculous. 
I'll go ahead and bloom these trees. One of three clovers. The other one's back here. And right here. Shit, that was Gus. That was Gale Storm. There we go. And we got three chests. I really hope these guys don't get in my way here. We get a godly charm. We get a crystal. And the punchline. Stray bead number 26. Things along nicely. I think we got like what? 50, 60 by now? We got a lot. Now we're done at Taka Pass, so you can make your way back to the Mermaid Spring. We're gonna head back to Ryoshima Coast again. Only because there's no quicker way to get here. Ugh. Now we're gonna run and make our way to Ankoku Temple. We don't actually need to be here, but it's just... Right to the right of Ankoku Temple. Down this path. Towards the... Guardian Sapling. Past here we have COWS! COWS, man! We'll throw a little bit of praise on ya. But my god, 956? I think it's time we alleviate some of this shit. Let's see, uh, oh, kind of run low on health. Let's get some more ink. Can never be too low on ink. Ever. Wow. And we'll go ahead and increase our health while we're at it. One's good enough. We'll be getting more later though, so no worries there. Down this hard dig spot is where we need to go next, and oof. That don't look good. But I'm going in. Spider Queen from the Suit of the Ruins actually has variations now. But everything's still the same, just a little bit tougher. What do I mean by tougher? Well, instead of two hooks to open up his little his little body, it takes three. It's easier said than done, especially when he likes to thrash around a lot. Yeah. Trying to hook on. Oh wait, got it. There. Once this happens, now we have Veil of Mist to our disposal. And we also have all of these uh, radical rosary powers too to really deliver the hurt. In fact, I can take a Steel Soul Sake or Steel Fist Sake. To increase my attack power. An infinity stone if I feel like it. Which I do. And additionally, since you start to shake like that, I can just... Well, let's see if this works. I haven't tried this yet. We'll try it. An exorcism slip and... Oh, that hurts him too! That's excellent. That's just so bloody excellent. I can do a Veil of Mist again to give him more, give me more time for the, to hook the vines onto his body. I'm trying to find my words. One more. Nothing to it. And he opens up again. Veil of Mist goes again. Man, this is really good. Save the time. In fact, I can probably just use a large exorcism slip and take him out right now. Just about. These three are left. I really want to take him out like right now, though. Almost got him. One more. And oh, that's the fastest I've ever done that. I just thought of that strategy off the off the fly. 
They worked like really, really well. So yes, exorcism slips. Oh, look at that bonus. Oh yeah. Ha ha ha. That's 14,000 yen right there. We did all that work just for, well, a sun fragment. That gives us one extra bit of health, which is very nice. We started our second row now. We're at a pretty good spot to start things, I guess. So we'll leave. But then we gotta go right back in. Like, literally, right back in. This like this makes my list of bottom five things of about Okami HD. The Devil Trial Gates. This is pretty much an enemy rush of ten pretty difficult encounters, one after another after another. You can't leave. You can't die. You have, well, you can do as many times as you like, but it's just really really annoying. Ten waves of this. I'll show you what I mean. But luckily there's some things we can do. Let's change our equipment first. I don't think we need the fire tablet. Got our good glaive equipped. Sub-weapon. I think we're good here. Doing good with our rosaries too. Uh, make sure you have the, your infinity stones as well as some vengeance slips and uh, your traveler's charms, your godly charms, your sakes, and uh, some golden peaches if you're really, really hurting. And make sure you got your holy bones too. So if you're all... And also, make sure that uh, you get a lot of demon fangs here, too. I'll show you what I mean, but... Uh, I have 86 here. We'll see how many I get by the end of this. Let's just get this first wave of rolling. Your first wave is 10 green imps... And... 6 red imps. The guys with the guitars. Ideally, the first thing to do is just piss on everybody. You can... Because you can get a lot of demon fangs from the Devil Trial Gates. From the floral finishers that you get, as well as pissing on everybody, too. But these guys, both of their floral finishers are uh, power slashes. So for both of these types, you can just use a power slash to finish them off before you deliver the final blow, and that was too late on that guy. New enemies are constantly coming in when uh, you replace more of them. More of them you can piss on, that is. We're trying to reach a certain number of, uh, demon fangs here. There's really no rush as to how many you can get on here, but I'm just doing it just because it's saving time. Try and get about 180 demon fangs. To get everything that we need to do for the next episode, we need 180 demon fangs. It may seem impossible, but not really. Because if you piss on every single enemy, that's a hundred demon fangs right there. Not to mention what their floral finishers could be. Sometimes they give up more than one of them as well. And we'll just find that you're just picking up demon, fang demon fangs right up the fly. It's good to focus on pissing them, on, pissing on them and getting floral finishers right now in these early stages, because things will get pretty hectic in the later ones, and you might lose track. So it's good to... Ah, shit. It's good to start early. They do disappear from the field, too, so make sure that uh, you pick those up. Not too late on that guy. This is a great way to get demon fangs, and also a great way to get money. This is uh, one of three Devil Trial Gates. The third one is probably the best one if you really want to get a lot of money really, really quickly. Welp. One down, nine to go. Don't worry, we're not going to go ahead and sit through all of them. I'm just going to give you a quick strategy for each wave as we go through. So, number two. Wave 2 is 7 red imps and 3 yellow imps. I hate this round because these guys with the bongos, they really, really uh, make things hectic. 
It's hard to get to get behind them and keep moving around, especially when these guys are always on your back. Yeah. They hurt a lot too. Luckily their floor finisher is the power slash as well, so you don't have to deviate too much from that strategy. Nothing too complicated yet. Alright, last guy. Go! Oh, hate that bazooka, was it? Whether that knocks him out. I got piss on him once more. Get that one little thing. Knock him out, make sure I do the floor finisher before I actually hit him with another rosary thing, because that's very, very easy to do. Look at the money we're getting. It's incredible. Wave 3, and I already have 107 Demon Fangs. I'm at Wave 3. Make sure you also keep track of your health as well, because the game won't do it for you. Also increase your god your godhood so that way you can take a few hits without taking damage. So wave three, here goes. Shit. Wave three are three dead fish and th and uh, eight red imps. Wow. You want to take down these uh, dead fish really quickly. Use Gale Storm and they'll come crawling down to your level so you can hit them with a whole bunch of those attacks. So you can piss on them and do your floor finishers on them all that easier. But I think it's better to take out these imps first. If they blow up on you, you can't use the floral finisher, which is kind of lame. There we go. Because I had my godhood up, I didn't take a single hit. Wave 4. Still looking strong. This is 3 Bud Ogres and uh, 9 Red Imps. Man, they just keep pouring on the Red Imps, don't they? Like with your Rosary, you can take them out with uh, relative ease. Yeah, I think I messed up on that. Oh well. <laughs> that guy doing okay. It's a little difficult to take care of these butt ogres because they only they're only vulnerable when you do bloom. And again, with things being so hectic, it's kind of difficult to lose track. But what you can do is you can bloom two at once. And take out your hits just the same. Their floral finisher is of course bloom. Of course, the red imps are still power slash. And there you go. Ooh. Wave five. Still doing okay. Yep. All right, wave five. We have three blue imps and eight red imps. The blue imps can be taken down and floor finished with the gale storm. This is I like to have the glaive as a secondary weapon, especially the, Kusa the blade of Kusanagi, because you can use that to just sail across the room right into an enemy. Works very, very well, very, very handy. I should also mention that the Golden Fury doesn't work if the enemy is blocking. I find it's easier to deal with the blue imps once the red imps are gone, so you can just use Gale Storm. Blow everybody into a corner. You can just piss on a couple of them. There's a couple of demon things right there. Be careful not to kill him here. Oh. Gale Storm. There you go. There's another one and one more to go. There you go. Huh, <sighs> halfway done. Still looking strong? Well, if you're not, it's alright. 
this might be the good time to start using infinity stones because they're going to start being your uh, strategy for most of these now. So we'll get an infinity stone, get a holy bone, and for safekeeping, we'll go ahead and get our godhood all the way up, and maybe a vengeance slip to deflect damage even further. And then we go to wave six, which is three crow tangu and three dead fish. The crow tangu can be taken out with gale storm, and the dead fish with power slash. I really hate fighting the crow tangu because I can't find a good way to deal with them when they're in the air, only when they're on the ground. So until they get on the ground, just take care of the dead fish and keep them company. Yeah, give them a good piss, maybe. But once they're on the ground, you can slash them up. Yeah. But I don't recommend using the sub weapon there. I hate most about these crow tangas is that if you manage to hit one when you're fighting another enemy, that immediately stops your combo. Alright, I almost got this one. Hopefully I don't kill him before the gale storm. And this dead fish stays out of my way. One more! Alright. Got it. And I think I can grab this one as well. I can hit him just one at a time up here. There we go. Power slash! Boom! Another demon fang. Here is definitely where you want to have your Infinity Stone. And now for another really good strat. Veil of Mist. Wave 7 is 6 Blue Imps and 3 Chimeras, or pot belly Demons. The idea is to use Veil of Mist as frequently and as often as possible. This adds another entirely new, like, degree to how complex things can get in these places. Well, for the Blue Imps, of course, is Gale Storm. And uh, for, for these uh, Chimeras, that's a Power Slash. Yeah. I already started to lose my concentration. Shit. The best part about them is that the Chimeras give out two Demon Fangs for them to do their full finisher. I think it's a good idea to get the three Chimeras out of the way so you, so you can focus solely on the Blue Wings again. Because when a Gale Storm will bunch them all into one side of the screen, you can piss on more than one at a time. Usually, hopefully, if you're lucky. That's two of them, that guy. That was two at once. And last one, there you go. Not bad. Whew. Wave 8. Things only get harder from here on in. Make sure you heal up. Get your godhood back on track. Maybe get an infinity stone and invention slip going. Head on into wave eight. Which is three black imps and six red imps. The black imps are kind of difficult, but uh, no worries because all of their four finishers are power slashes. The black imps are my favorite ones. Because they give out the most. If you're hunting for demon fangs, it's probably better to take out the red imps first so you can focus on getting their four finishers. Use Veil of Mist frequently as well. Perfect opportunity! That's three Demon Fangs for every Power Slash you give to one of these imps. These black imps. 
That's insane. So then you can use Veil of Mist to sort of cleave around the room, use your sub-weapon if you want to get things more exact. And then when you take him out, you can just use one Power Slash to get three Demon Fangs. Not even counting the time you piss on him, that's four. Four Demon Fangs that these things can give you. Keep that in mind. Bam. Beautiful. The best part is if you got an, a good defense, they're easy as hell. Wave 9. Sheesh. This is my least favorite wave. You have to deal with three fire eyes and three ice mounts. And they're not always keen on uh, being helpful or, you know, open to strike. So my suggestion is to just use an infinity stone and just spam Veil of Mist and wail on them with the rosary. Oh, maybe piss on them too if you want. I think that can work. Alright, that did it. And they give you like three demon fangs. Or two. They give you two demon fangs. Three if you count the piss, but I can't see the piss on them. There you go. Very hard to piss on them because they're so invulnerable all the fucking time. Jesus Christ. There's two more demon fangs. I think we're at the last of them. If I can just focus on one or two at a time, I think we'll be alright. No way to get the mouth, but I can still get the eyes for a fair shape. Once the mouth is gone, I can just use the eye. The mouth is harder to to uh, make vulnerable than the, than the eye is. <sighs> Come on, you're almost dead, damn it. Come on, man! I'm sick of your crap! I just want this, re this round to be over! One more. Jeez! I hate these things! Man! There. Yeah, time damn fear, whatever. Get this fire off of me. Well, we finally reached the last leg of this endurance round. So, tip. Get your Godhood to max. Infinity Stone. Vengeance Slip. In you go. Pause game. Steel Fist Sake. Steel Soul Sake. Round 10 is 10 black imps, so you can piss on them and do your floor finisher to your heart's content, and oh my god, there are so many demon fangs to be had here. It is insane. And when you've got Veil of Mist on, it's so much easier to keep track of them. This is like a reward for doing all of this. Because you're going to get a whole bunch of demon fangs if you do it right. There's, there's some right there. If you don't think you're going to reach 180 Demon Fangs, well, you'll certainly get there if you do this right. The best part is they come out three or four at a time, so uh, it's not like you're being overly swamped with anything. This is kind of a relaxing tenth way, kind of a good way to send things off. The only thing about them is that their attacks hurt a lot, so make sure you keep that Godhood up. Make sure you keep that health up, too. You can't pause the game while you're stunned, though, so if you think your health is getting low, you need to get it up there, then. One more Infinity Stun and one more Vengeance Slip should do me well.
And that's the last one. Whew, man. Your reward is a golden peach. Oh, and this chest. Oh, it's about been 60 minutes now since I started this episode. And all this to get Straybead 44. And now, we gotta take care of Seon City's Stray Beads. But we'll save that for next time, so we'll see you next time on Let's Play Okami HD. See y'all later.